This video is about limit laws. We're in the context of a calculus class exploring the topic of limits. This is not the first video in that series and it's not the last either, but this is an important one where we start to identify um, some laws or properties of limits that we'll be able to use going forward to evaluate limits. So for our notes, we'll just dive right into it and discuss the limit laws. To get things set up here, we're gonna let C be a constant and suppose that the limit as x approaches a of f of x and the limit as x approaches a of g of x exist. These limit laws are very useful uh, when we want to evaluate limits analytically or algebraically. And so this video is really just kind of explaining or writing out the laws. We're not going to use them with examples until a later video here. Our first law is that if you have the limit as x approaches a, of a sum or difference of functions, so we have f of x plus or minus g of x, then it turns out that you can take the limit of each of those functions separately and then keep the same sign that you had. So if it was a plus, you keep the plus. If minus, you keep the minus. And then simply add those individual limit results or subtract them together to get your overall limit there. One very common application of this first limit law would be if you simply have a function with multiple terms in it, uh, like a polynomial even, or something even more complicated, you can take the limit of each term separately uh, and then add or subtract the results of those limits together to get your overall limit. Secondly, we have that the limit as x approaches a of c, remember c is our constant, so c times f of x, pull the constant out in front of the limit and then just take the limit of the function and then multiply that limit result by c. So interestingly, c uh, isn't really interfering with the limit in this property. It's just being pulled out in front and will still be multiplied to get the final result. Thirdly, we could say that the limit as x approaches a of a product of functions, so f of x times g of x. Okay, importantly, this is not a composition. This is a product. It turns out that you could just multiply the limits of each of those functions together. Uh, this property or this law of limits will help us when we have a product of functions where it'd be much easier simply to evaluate the limit of each function separately. Fourthly, we could say that the limit as x approaches a of a quotient of functions. So now we have f of x divided by g of x. It turns out that you could actually apply the limit to each of those individually. So we can take the limit of the numerator and then divide that by the limit of the denominator. Of course, as always with fractions, we can't let the denominator be zero, so we have to have this extra little condition there to make sure that's clear. Fifthly, we could say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x to the nth power, so now this is some function all raised to an nth power, is going to be the same as taking the limit of that function and then raising that result to that nth power. And so this can be very convenient to utilize. Notice n is a natural number in this case. Natural numbers, of course, are positive integers. Sixthly, we can say that the limit as x approaches a of some constant c is simply that constant c. Seventh, the limit as x approaches a of x to the n is equal to a to the n. Okay, that's a little interesting. If you just kind of take a second to look at these variables here, notice that a is the value that x is approaching here. And it turns out that we're just plugging it in for x in this function, right? That's, it started as x to the n, now it's a to the n. And so it turns out that works out just fine. In fact, we'll get a lot more of that kind of behavior going with limits very shortly here. Eighthly, we could say that the limit as x approaches a of the nth root of x is equal to the nth root of a. Okay, so same thing happening as in the seventh law there. We're just substituting a the value x is approaching, in for x, and the result here. And then lastly, 
we could say that the limit as x approaches a of the nth root of f of x, okay, so we have some function f of x all underneath the nth root here, and it turns out that we could actually throw this limit inside the root so that we're now taking the nth root of that limit. That's one way to think of it, or you could think of it as taking this nth root and kind of throwing it outside of the limit. Okay, but either way, this law will work. Now, if n is even, we have to assume that this limit value is positive, otherwise we cannot take the even root of a negative value, as we know from radical expressions in algebra. As I mentioned, there are many examples to come with these laws. This video is simply about listing them. Writing them out with your own hand is actually a good way to make sure that they're clear in your brain, and we'll be applying them shortly with some examples in another video.